All right, Jeremy Miner, we are live for today's live. What is it today? It is Tuesday. It is, what's the holiday here? Happy Halloween, right? So I'm going and taking my five-year-old Sophie trick-or-treating here. Uh, what time is it here in Scottsdale? 3.26 p.m. So I'm going to go out and trick-or-treat here in a couple of hours. Okay, so Tuesday, we always go live in about five, six different platforms. So we're going live here on my desktop uh, using StreamYard. We're going live in our Facebook group, Sales Revolution. Well done to you guys. Almost 100,000 of you in there in that Facebook group. That thing is growing quickly. We're also going live here in our Facebook business page. 154,000 of you on there follow me around. Uh, going live on YouTube here in the desktop, 23,000 new subscribers in the last 30 days. We're starting to pay attention to YouTube now. Going live here on my personal Facebook, and I'm going live here on the Instagram phone. Love you guys. About 570-some thousand of you follow me around there from those little reels, little nuggets that I give out here and there, little nibbles for you guys. Now, today, I want to answer a question that I always, my team my, my social media team always comes and says, hey, everybody's always asking on your reels, on the post, in Facebook, LinkedIn, IG, TikTok, YouTube, Jeremy, how did you make, how did you average over $2 million a year in straight commissions, no salary, straight commissions, and do that in four completely different industries? During, it was almost 18 year careers, like 17 years and like nine months, almost 18 year career before you retired, before you started seven level. How did you do that? Four completely different industries, two B2C, two B2B. So today I thought I would give you the steps that I took, okay? And steps we train our clients, not just tactical skills. Obviously, if you're one of our clients, you know we're the most tactical training company probably on the planet. At least that's what our clients say. Okay. As far as like what questions to ask, how to use your tone, what body language, all of that. That's primarily what we train you in our virtual training courses. We're not necessarily teaching you how to get pumped up or hyped up. You can go to all the motivational gurus for that. Just not, it's not our ball game. We're a sales training company. We're going to train you what to say and ask that triggers the prospects to let their guard down and want to emotionally open up. But sometimes, sometimes it's good for us to show you some different steps, different steps that I took to get up to that income level as a salesperson. Now, when I say making that type of money, I didn't own the business. Good Lord, if I'd owned the business, I, would, I wouldn't be here. I would be like a, a billionaire by that time in those companies. I will tell you that. But I sold for them. I was either a W-2 rep and a few of those companies I negotiated to be a 1099 rep, just better for tax purposes here in the USA. Okay. Now, two of those were in the B2C industry. That stands for business to consumer. And two of those were B2B. One more enterprise level, one more SMB type of level. Okay. And there are differences and tweaks in all uh, four of those places. All right. Now, what I'm going to show you are steps that I took personally to get to that level. And it is steps that we train our clients. Many of them are in your exact industry watching me here right now. What am I wearing? A black Hugo Boss shirt today or something. And I'm going to show you the same steps that our clients take besides the tactical training. We train them as far as the questions, the right tone, body language, everything, a lot more objection, prevention, objection, handling, all that stuff. I'm going to show you the steps that you'll need to understand besides the tactical skills, because I can show you all these steps, but if you don't have the tactical skills because you haven't learned them yet, you're, you're just you're disadvantaged compared to our clients in your space who are learning them. So why don't we show you the steps and you can do with them what you will. If you're one of our clients, you already know all this and about 10 billion times more. Now, if you are brand new, you just started following me on YouTube or started following me here on Instagram, love you guys on IG. Is it, are you a Hugo Boss sponsor? We should be, Steve. We have had people reach out. We will see. A lot of companies have been wanting to sponsor us shirts. We're still on the Hugo Boss kick. We'll see what happens. So if you just started following me on Instagram or you just started following me in the Facebook business page or the Facebook group Sales Revolution here on my desktop or YouTube, I'm Jeremy Miner. Okay, I'm the founder of Seventh Level. If you don't know, you're like, who the hell is this guy on my feed? 
Uh, seventh level, we are a sales training organization that individuals and companies come to us because they want to acquire a much higher level of sales ability so they can sell more, right? So we train sales professionals like you. We train sales executives like you. We train entrepreneurs like you, coaches, consultants, contractors, business owners, and we train you and your team specific skilled questions and techniques that work with human behavior rather than work against it. Are you 100% sure the questions you've been made to use by your company are the right ones for what you're selling? Are you 100% sure you know how to use the different types of tonalities to cause your prospects to let their guard down, to cause your prospects to build a much bigger emotional gap, to cause your prospects to emotionally open up and go below the surface and tell you what's really going on. Because if you're not, that means you're losing sales that our clients who are in the same industry as you, they are making those every day. Now, if you're on the live right now, I want you to go down to the comment section and post hashtag live. I know you're on your phone, so if you're on the live right now, go post hashtag live. And if you're on the replay, go post hashtag replay. Between Instagram here and between YouTube and the Facebook group and the Facebook business page, we've got well over 700 of you on here. That's pretty high for Halloween. I figured there'd be half of that. So between all those five, those platforms. So go post hashtag live if you're on the live in the comments. And if you're on the replay, go post hashtag replay. I better see hundreds of hashtag lives. Because I, you know, I could go trick or treating. I'm really hungry. I've been saving. I haven't been eating a lot of sugar for like the last three months. I've lost like 12 pounds. No sugar going on here. So go po post hashtag live if you're on the live hashtag replay. Now, here's what I'm also gonna have you. I'm gonna have you smash the heart button, and I'm gonna have you smash the like button. So smash the heart button. Smash the like button. I better see hundreds smashed hearts. Hundreds of smashed likes. I don't have to show you these steps here. I mean. What would it help you? I mean, you want me to help you with this? Okay, I'm just giving you a hard time. I love you guys. Okay, all right. So I'm going to put you guys Instagram. I'm going to put you guys over there. So hopefully you can still see that for your sake. Let's see if you can see that. I'm going to move this over so you guys can still see it over here. All right. Now, I'm going to count down these steps. You might want to pay attention about what I'm going to cover. Okay. Now, how did I make? Okay, so I averaged well over... 2.4 million a year in commissions. Okay, how did I do that in four completely different industries? Now, I will tell you, the first industry, when I got into college, I sold door-to-door -door home security systems. I did not make 2 million a year in that industry. The main reason is, is because in that industry, it was door-to-door -door summer programs, and you only worked three and a half to four months in the summer while you went to college. There's no way I can make $2 million wasn't that good enough in door-to-door -door sales working four months in the summer and the other eight months while I was going to college. I did get up to a little bit over 100K a month in commissions in that industry. So technically, if I'd worked the whole year, would have made well over a million a year, but went to school, okay? So the other industries I made that in were B2B debt relief services, okay? Made almost $3 million a year in that industry. Do you know what the average rep in that industry makes? What does the average rep in that industry make? Less than 60 grand a year. How the hell was I making more than that every week? I'm going to show you some steps you can use in tactical skills if you want to get to that level. Also made that in the high ticket industry, selling educational services, conferences, events, made a ton of money, well, about two and a half million. Made that in network marketing as well. You can still Google my name. I'm ranked number 45 in the world out of everybody in that industry for multiple years straight. I was only in that industry for under five years. And I also did that in, uh, what uh, what industry was that? What would you call it? It was more of the, uh, you sold like e-commerce uh, education packages to like investors who wanted to like use their money for different ways. You'd sell like Amazon SBA and stuff like that, e-com. So made that in four different industries. Now, I'm gonna show you what it takes. These are not tactical skills I'm gonna show you today, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you just what you have to do, all right? The first thing that you're really gonna to have to decide to do. So if you wanna be, I'm just gonna say, if you wanna be a top 1% earner, 
Okay. So wherever you're at right now, I don't care if you're making 20 grand a year in commissions, 50 grand, 30 grand, 70 grand, 100 grand, 200 grand, 300 grand. I don't care. If you want to become a top 1% earner in your industry, if you want to make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year more than you or what are you making now, the first thing you're really going to have to decide. And I know, I know this sounds like obvious, but you got to really damn, you got to damn step, step up and say like, I'm a thousand percent committed to doing that because I'm going to tell you, it's going to take a lot of learning that you have not done yet in persuasion and influence to be able to hit those numbers. So the first step you have to be, and this is what I did when I decided when I was a 22 year old kid, I was like, I'm going to master this. I am going to master this. I am a thousand percent committed. So what did that mean? When my friends went out on the weekends and partied it up and got drunk and were hung over or they did drugs and they couldn't function for two or three days, guess what I was doing? I was at home acquiring more skills to sell more, learning how to ask better questions, learning advanced tonality, going to acting in theater classes to learn how to use my tone to trigger certain emotions and prospects. Wasn't going to be an actor in Hollywood. I wanted to master the art of tonality and body language. Where's the best place to learn that? Some of the best acting schools in the world, okay? I was a thousand percent all in. My friends, they were just kind of all in eight to five, Monday through Friday, and that was it. They read one sales book every three or four months, which you only really remember maybe 3% of that after 30 days, according to the brain. And that was their commitment. They weren't a thousand percent in. Some of them are a hundred percent in. You got to be a thousand percent all in. So that's the first thing you got to do. Okay. So do you want to be a top 1% earner in sales? You got to make this decision that you are going to become the best in your industry. I will tell you, if you don't make the decision to become the best, you will not do what it takes to become the best. To become the best, you have to be willing to do things other salespeople are not willing to do. That means acquiring more skills. That means putting in more time to learn those skills. That means putting more time to role play those skills. That means going to events. That means going to conferences. That going through advanced courses. You have to be committed to become the best or you will not do the things, the action steps that will take to become the best, I can assure you. Now, what is behind you wanting to become the best? This is a decision you have to make. Why do you want to become the best? The best? I'm telling you, if it's just because I want to make a ton of money, that is not going to get you there. There has to be a psychological reason behind why you want to become the best. And it's not money. What is your why? What is behind your why? Is it making sure that your future family or your kids now have a different financial upbringing than you ever experienced as a kid? That could be your why. That will drive you way more than just, I want to get rich. If you're in it to get rich, I can assure you, you won't last. You will never become the best if you just want to be rich and that's it. Now you can decide you want to make a lot of money because when you acquire those type of skill sets, you'll by default make 20 times more than you are now. Okay. But you have to decide what is behind your why. Is it because you want to take care of your parents when they get older, make sure they have the best, you know, care together? I mean, it could be so many different things, right? It could be awards and recognition. Maybe you're driven by you want the company to give you the number one award in the entire nation. You not only want to become the number one salesperson in that company, you want to be known as the number one rep in the entire industry. Now that will drive you to outlearn everybody else. Okay. So you have to decide what is behind, not just your why, but what is behind the why. Okay. Does that make sense? Not just your why that's surface level. What is behind the why? Once you decide that and write it down, you'll take the necessary action steps to actually accomplish that. If you don't, you will never get there. I can assure you, I could train you everything. You'll make a lot more sales and money, but you'll never become the number one salesperson in your industry. You got to decide you want it. Now, this is a big one. You got to be committed to mastering the craft. Is sales something you're born with? 
Yes or no? In the chat, type in, is sales something you're born with? Yes or no? Type in yes or no. Is sales something you're born with? Is anybody in the world born with a natural sales ability? You ever hear that thing? Oh, she's got the gift of the gab. She could sell ice to an Eskimo. Those salespeople are typically average because the more you gab and talk, the less you actually sell. You ever heard the saying, telling is not selling? Telling is not selling. You see, unfortunately for you and I, none of you were born with advanced questioning skills. Type in me if you were literally born out of your mother's womb with advanced questioning skills. Anybody? Anybody on here born with advanced questioning skills out of your mother's womb? Anybody? Oh, no. None of you were born with advanced questioning skills, and neither was I. Type in me if you were born with advanced tonality skills. Type in me if you were born out of your mother's womb with advanced tonality skills. Oh, no, none of you are born with advanced tonality skills. Type in me if you were born with advanced objection handling and objection prevention skills. Type in me if you were born with advanced objection prevention and handling skills. No. You see, those are skills you acquire. Those are skills you learn. I wasn't born with any of those either. So if a kid like me who grew up in a cattle ranch outside of a town in the middle of Missouri that has less than 800 people in it can acquire those skills, what does that mean for you? What does it mean for you? It means you can acquire the same skills, but you have to decide you were going to master the craft of the art and science of persuasion. Your family's future financial future will determine on you deciding if you're going to master the craft or not their whole future for generations to come will be determined by your decisions. If you're just going to stay at the same level you're at now, or if you're actually going to get serious and master the craft, but they are affected one way or the other, right? Okay. All right, let's keep going. Number two, this is important. Step number two, you want to become a top 1% earner? Let me give you some advice. You got to hang around other top performers. I promise you, you hang out with broke ass salespeople. Where are you going to be? Broke ass. Excuse my language. My mom would wash my mouth out with soap right now if she were here. I'm sorry, mom. You hang around with low performing average salespeople who sit around and complain about the leads, complain about the comp plan, complain about the sales manager, complain about the company, complain about the prospects. My prospects have so much fear. Oh, all the top people get all the good leads. Ah, oh. you will never become the top if you don't hang out with top performers. You just won't. You ever heard the saying, you are who you associate yourself with? You are the average of the five people you hang out with most of the time. There is a lot of truth to that. Okay. You never want to hang out with low performers. Unfortunately, you will start to think like them very, very quickly. Okay. So you want to hang out with reps who sell more than you. I don't care if you're the fifth top rep in that company and you want to be the best and you're so prideful. Oh, I'm so prideful. I think I know everything about selling. I'm not going to ask the top person what they're doing differently than me. Well, you don't have to, but your ego unfortunately holds you back from acquiring more skill sets to outpace that person. So you want to learn from reps who sell more than you. Wouldn't that make sense to find out what they're doing that you haven't learned yet? Probably. Now, here's one thing I see so much. You want to become a top 1% rep? Never take advice from reps who make less than you. 
Why would you take advice from salespeople who make less than you? What are you thinking? Now, let me give you the only thing that might be different with that. See, even when I was making close to $3 million a year in a couple of those industries as a W-2 or 1099 rep, there was nobody in my company or in that industry that even made a third of that, okay? The next best person made about 600000 a year, sometimes 700000 I did go to that person and ask them certain things. What do you do when you get this objection? What do you do when the prospect does that? And sometimes I was like, oh, that's really good, but uh, their tone is really off there. But that's a really good question. If I just changed a couple words in that question and my tone was more kind of a concern tone, I would actually be able to overcome that objection better. So sometimes if you're maybe the top person in your company or the industry, well, where do you go to? Sometimes you go to below a couple levels down and you'll ask them for advice, but you always got to understand this person makes way less than me. I got to take that advice and maybe change it around a little bit because maybe they have a good idea, but just the questions off, the wording's off. They don't know how to use their tone. I'm just going to change my tone here. I'm going to change these couple of words, neutralize it. I'm going to get a better result. If that's the case, there are some changes that you can do that. I just wanted to do that. Now, here's one thing I see all the time. And you probably don't even know you're doing it. And it says, yeah, rifle. it's a classic tale of the blind lead the blind. They both fall into the ditch, right? Didn't Christ say that in the New Testament? If the blind lead the blind, shall they not both fall into the ditch? That's the, I guess, the old English version. He didn't speak English, but that's how they translated it. Okay. Never, never, never take advice from sales trainers who didn't make what you want the, what you want to make. Most of you take advice from sales trainers that didn't even make what you want to make when they were a salesperson selling like you. Have you ever thought about that before? Look, if you're like, I want to make 400,000 a year in commissions. And you're going through sales training programs from sales trainers who, when they were in sales, made 200 grand a year. How the hell are you going to make 400 grand a year when the sales trainer you're learning from couldn't even do that themselves when they were a salesperson like you? You ever think about that? If you want to make five or 600,000 a year, who should you learn from? From sales trainers who made way more than that when they were a salesperson with what they were selling, not a business owner. Somebody like, well, I'm taking advice from a sales trainer who's a billionaire. That's great. But were they a billionaire when they were selling one-to-one? -one? Probably not. Now they have a business. That's great. Take business advice. But how much did they make when they were in the trenches like you? You probably want to take advice from who? Sales trainers who made far more than you. So if you make 100000 a year, if you're taking advice from a sales trainer that made over a million years of commissions as a rep, that's probably a good thing. I'm going to go out on a limb to say that they can probably help you make more. But if you take advice from sales trainers who didn't even make what you want to make, how the hell do you think you're going to make more money? Uh, you probably never thought about it. You're welcome for that one. Okay, exactly. All right. Okay, let's keep going here. Like I said, let's say if you're like, damn it, Jeremy, I want to make 600000 a year. How can you learn the sales ability from a sales trainer who never made more than three hundred grand a year when they were in their sales job? Going to be pretty damn hard, right? Because you're not going to learn 100% of what that sales trainer knows. It's impossible, right? But let's say you can even learn 50% of what they know. And let's say they made $1.5 a year and that gets you up to Five, six hundred thousand a year, and you're at a hundred now. That's a big deal, right? You want to learn from people who made a lot more money than you when they're in sales. Okay, number three. This is one that most salespeople, even that we train the skill level, have to learn. Okay. Do you guys train anyone in the logics and supply chain space? Yes. So we train 161 different industries, including your industry. That's a big industry for us, probably in the top 30. Okay. All right, uh, let's keep going here. Prospect time blocking. Now, do you even know what prospect time blocking means? Prospect time blocking. When do you, now, some industries, you're only doing inbound leads. Some of you are only doing outbound leads. 
Some of you are only cold calling and then booking them in, right? It depends on your industry. B2C, B2B, they're all variations. But what do you have scheduled? Let's say you're in an industry where you do some outbound, some inbound, and you do some cold calling. Do you actually have that scheduled on your calendar each day? Do you have times blocked out section by section in your calendar where sometimes you're taking inbound leads, sometimes you're calling outbound leads. That means somebody responded to like some type of maybe an ad on social media, name, email, phone number. They know somebody's calling back. They just don't know who or when. Or are you cold calling? Do you have times booked on your calendar Monday through Friday, two hours to cold call? The next two hours, I'm doing inbounds. I've got those scheduled. The next three hours, I'm doing outbound. Do you have that scheduled or do you randomly do those things? Because if you randomly do it, you're never going to be in the top 1%. You, you, you just won't. You're too, you're too scatterbrained. You won't. I, I promise you won't. You have to do prospect time blocking, PTB. We would call this in my first corporate career, PTB, the power of prospect time blocking. Okay. When, while I was in my office, let's, let's, I'll give you the example. And the second industry I sold in was more enterprise and SMB debt relief services. I had this huge corner office they gave me because I was the top salesperson in the company in the industry. And on that sign out there, they even hired like a, a secretary, a VA to do all my data and CRM stuff. But there'd be a big sign there that says, do not disturb unless it's a 911. And nobody would come through that door because I was focused on this. This is what I was, I was doing all day. See, these made sales. Nothing else, nothing else. Maybe doing, maybe putting together some proposals, which I'd have my secretary do when I was in sales. They hired a secretary for me, but I was doing this. I was focused on this because these are the things that make you sales, right? Okay. Now, how many times a day do you check your email? Do you have that scheduled on your calendar? Or if you want to be a top 1%, you're going to pick about three to four times a day and you're going to schedule it on your calendar. Do you know what most salespeople do? <sighs> calling, 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 put the phone down to wait to the next call. Bing, hear an email. Oh, let me go check that email. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's so cool. I forgot about that concert Friday night. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I got to get on social media real quick. <sighs> oh, geez, Aunt Sally, she's always posting about her cats. Ah, yeah, who am I going to go out with Friday night? I don't even know who I'm going to take to the thing. Like, who should I do? In the next 15 minutes, not doing any of that, not making any money there, not making any sales, not moving anybody forward, right? Because they're randomly checking their emails. You want to be a top 1% earner? You're going to schedule emails every day in your calendar. What I would do is I'd check them right when I woke up in the morning. Typically, I woke up at about 5 a.m., okay? I wouldn't check them right at 5. So if I wake up at 5, I go to the gym from 5.30 to 6.30. I'd be back at my place by 6.45. I'd get ready and about 7.15, scheduled, pop up my calendar, boom, right on my phone, check email, go in and check my email, respond to the most important ones, okay? Now, eventually, when you make enough money, you need to hire a VA, okay? Companies I used to work for because I made them so much money, you're talking about millions of dollars a month, would hire me a secretary. You don't have to do that. Now, in our day, you can hire a VA from overseas somewhere and pay them five, six dollars an hour, depending on the country, and get a pretty good one that literally will go through your emails for you and only send you the most important ones to respond to. Okay. So, what my secretary would do if a prospect emailed, let's say during the middle of the day, because I check my emails at 7 15, I check them about 15 minutes before lunch at 11 45. This is all scheduled. Then I check them again, usually about 4 30, 5 o'clock before I left the office. And I check them again one time, usually before I went to bed at 10. I just wanted to. Okay. Now my secretary, she, what she would do or your VA, she would most of the time during work, the work hours, she would basically send me the ones that were important. If they were not important, I never responded. I never even looked at them. I never looked at anything unless it was a prospect saying, I'm ready to pay. What's the next step? Okay. And she would send me those and she'd come knock on the door. Hey, you got a prospect that's ready to pay or Hey, that company, they're ready to send in the invoice. Like what do they need to do? Or they have a question about this. And if I knew it was important, bam, I'm doing that, but I'm still doing this. Still focus there. Okay. So you gotta, you gotta schedule your emails. I, I'm serious. It's a big deal. It will save you tons of time. Okay. How many, um, how are you building your pipeline? 
Are you building a pipeline? If somebody doesn't buy, where are they going? Are you just forgetting about them in the CRM? Do you have a pipeline? Do you have a pro What does your process look like to build a pipeline? Do you even have one? Do you even know what I'm talking about? That's a big one there. Okay. All right. Number four, this is a really important one. And I say five for last because it is the most important one. Number four, you have to focus on income producing activities. Are you, are you really focused on income producing activities eight hours a day? I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you're probably not. Okay. Data input. How many hours a day are you putting in data input into your CRM compared to calling prospects? Which, which one makes you money? Data input or calling prospects? Which one is an income producing activity? This, because this can be done by someone else. So even if you're, if you're getting up to seven, eight grand a month, even six grand a month, hiring a VA for $5 an hour. If they're doing this, that this, let's say this takes you an hour a day. Some, some people it takes them longer. That's five hours a week. That's 20 hours a month of income producing activities you are not doing. That's 20 more hours a month of you calling prospects. That's 240 more hours a year of you calling prospects. You want to be a top 1% earner? Then you got to focus on what can earn you the money and data input does not do that. You got to get a virtual assistant. You got, it's a game changer. It'll save you so much time. It'll make you so much more money. You'll be like, I can't believe I never had a VA. Like, what was I thinking? All right. Now, like I said, I put higher VA kid once you get to 12 grand a month, with how cheap they are now, I'd even do it when you're at six or seven grand a month. It'll save you so much time and you'll just make more money. Literally five, there's some VAs that are decent enough. You can hire for $4 and 50 cents an hour overseas, but you get about six bucks an hour. You're going to get a really good one. Sometimes, you know, uh, we even have them here in seventh level. You know, we're paying like people that have a master's degree over in the Philippines, $7 and 50 cents, $8 an hour. That's a master's degree. Okay. How long is your lunch? Be real. How long do you go to lunch each day on average? Hour, hour and a half. Sometimes do you procrastinate. Do you spend two hours on lunch? Do you know how much I spend on, how much time I spend on lunch? 15 minutes max. I hardly ever went out to lunch unless it was a high end client, depending on what I was selling. Okay. Sometimes I'd take a high end client out to lunch. That would be a what? Income producing activity. Okay. But if it wasn't, when people come, hey, hey, you want to go to lunch? All the average salespeople, they went to long lunch breaks, hour, hour and a half, two hours, because they never wanted to do income producing activities because they didn't have the skill level to do it. So they got rejected all the time. They couldn't close. That's why they never wanted to work. You learn the right skills. You want to take far less time at lunch. I would literally, on average, take 10 maybe 15 minutes. There were some days I'd snarl something down at my desk in seven minutes. I'm back to income producing activities. Okay. So look, how long are you taking your lunch? If I were you, I wouldn't take more than 30 minutes. If you want to make more money, I just got more time to do income producing activities. If I'm taking less of a lunch break, right? If I take all, if I take 30 minutes less a day to lunch, how many more hours is that per week? Two and a half more hours per week of income producing activities. That is 10 more hours a month. That's 120 more hours a, a year of income producing activities. It just all adds up. How many hours are you actually really working a day? If you take out the lunch breaks, if you take out how many times you get on social media to look at posts from your friends and family, if you take out how many times you get on dating websites, if you're single, if you take out how many, now you got to go to the bathroom, right? But if you're going to the bathroom, 12 times a day, unless you got a serious problem, or you're taking long lunch breaks, if you're on social media, how many, do you really count up how many hours you're really working on income producing activities? I'm not talking about putting data in the CRM. I'm not talking about checking emails, but income producing activities. Do you know the average salesperson in North America, it's the same around the world, works on average three 
to four hours a day. I'm not kidding you. You think you're there at your office 10 or 12 hours a day working? You're not working. You're just there. Income producing activities, the average salesperson does three hours a day of income producing activities. Just because you're sitting around at the office does not mean you are doing income producing activities. What if you did seven to eight hours a day of income producing activities? Right there would double your income and you don't even have to learn more skills. See? All right. Now, step number five, I saved the best for last. The most important. If you want to be a top one percenter, you have to thirst, my friend, for knowledge. You have to be a sponge. You want to learn all the time about sales. You're driving down the road. What are you doing? Are you listening to Taylor Swift? Are you listening to ACDC? Are you listening to Fox News or CNN? Well, not if you're a top one percent earner in sales. Because how many of those favorite songs of yours or news stations you listen to, how much money do they make you every month? How much money do those news stations and Taylor Swift, we love you, Taylor. I'm a Kelsey, Kelsey uh, Travis Kelsey football fan, Kansas City Chiefs. How much do they genuinely make you every month? Zero. Zero. God, how many hours do you waste every day, every week, every month? every year not learning jack crap about your profession that would make you 10 times more money than what you are what are you doing what does a neurosurgeon do just go to school once and they're good oh i'm good just gonna do brain surgeries i don't need to learn anything else i'll just read a book once every five or six months a 20 dollar book from the bookstore i'll be good no man they thirst for knowledge they're going to events, they're reading books, they're going through programs. That's why they make a ton of money because they're the best. You want to be a top one percenter? You got a freaking thirst for knowledge. When you're driving down, how many, how much time do you waste driving down the road? You know, one of the first things I ever learned, I went to an event as a first year salesperson at the end of the summer of, of my uh, junior year in college, right? When I first got into sales that first summer. I went to an event by Brian Tracy. Type in me if you know Brian Tracy. I'm pretty good friends with Brian now. Good guy. Did my first product here when I started 7 Level in 2018 with him, Ultimate Closers Masterclass. Brian said one thing that changed my life. He said, use your vehicle as a university on wheels. And from that day forward, I hardly ever listen to the radio. Usually if my kids are in there, they make me listen to it. I usually make them put their headphones on, Okay. From that day forward, I either read or listened to five books a month times 12 months a year on sales, persuasion, and influence. That's 60 books a year times the last 23 years. Do the math. That's well over 1,400 some sales books. That's just the beginning. I also went through almost 360. Kept track of them. 360 advanced courses. I'm not talking about basic courses. I'm talking advanced tonality, advanced body language, advanced speaking from stage, advanced questions, advanced word tracks. I could go on and on and on. Why would I go to acting school? Why would I even go enroll myself in acting school if I wasn't going to become an actor? Because I was committed to being the best. Everybody said, how'd you make so much money as a salesperson? How'd you do it, Jeremy? Oh, I simply outlearned everybody. That's it. I had tons of salespeople that worked more hours than I did, but I was far more effective in the hours I worked. Income producing activities. And I had the skill level that none of them had because I simply outlearned them. You want to be the best? You got to be committed to being the best, right? So you go through that many courses. You go through that many books. It's actually like 1,400 there. Now, just are books going to help you become a top 1%? There's some nuggets in there, but for the most part, most sales tra training books are just, they're more theory. 
And your brain, the way it works, is within 30 days of reading a book, you're only going to retain about 3% of that. That's just behavioral science 101, okay? Within 48 hours of reading a book, you retain about 19%. And within about uh, seven days, you retain about 9 to 10%. You're just not going to learn that much from books. And you don't learn any advanced tonality because you don't hear the tone with the different questions. You just don't. You're just reading words, right? It's like reading a manuscript, right? So what is your biggest expense in life? What is your biggest expense in life? It's this. It's your lack of knowledge. That is your biggest expense of life. It's your lack of knowledge of not having a higher level of sales ability that holds you back from being able to have the skill sets to make 200 grand a year in commissions or 300 grand a year in commissions or four or 500 or 600 or 700 or above. That is your biggest expense in life. Because are you born with this? No, you have to acquire this. Are audiobooks going to help you? Well, once again, they're going to give you theory. You probably want tactical training. You want advanced courses you can go through. Now, advanced courses, you can either watch on your computer or you can still hear them and watch them on your phone as you're driving around. You don't want to sit there and watch it, but you can plug your phone in, right? You have that advantage now. Advanced courses far more advanced than audiobooks. Audiobooks are theory. You're paying $20. Do you really think you're going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in commissions investing in $20 books? Really? Come on. This, this affects your family's future, right? Do you really believe you are going to make three times the sales by investing in a $23 book from Barnes & Noble? Hell, you could go buy our book at Barnes and Noble. It's a New York, it's a it's a Wall Street Journal bestseller, Barnes and Noble bestseller, Amazon bestseller. And after 30 days, you're gonna remember 3% of this. Are you gonna learn advanced tonality in this? No, it's still a great book. Is it gonna triple your sales? No. How could it? How could have how could I train you everything in a book? Come on. I love you guys, but let's you gotta get serious if you want to be a top one percenter. Now. Are you focused on the skills game or the numbers game? As a top one percenter, this is what you have to learn. Most salespeople are focused on the what? Numbers game. You've all heard it from your sales manager. That's eh, just a numbers game. Call as many leads as you can. Work harder. Well, the numbers game has gotten you where? To the exact income you're at. Nothing higher. If you want to make a lot more than you are, become a top 1% earner, you have to do what? You have to focus on the skills game. Skills game. See, sales is a skills game. It's a skills game. Get it in your mind. Every conversation, what did I not ask? What did I not say? How did I use my tone wrong? What did I do that triggered that prospect that had problems that my solution could solve, not purchase for me? See, that's a skills game. Can you imagine Steph Curry? Type in me if you watch the NBA. Or who's your favorite athlete? Just type in the chat who your favorite athlete is. Type in the chat. I want to see. Type in the chat. Who's your favorite athlete? Here on IG, here in the Facebook group, Sales Revolution, or on YouTube, or the Facebook business page. Who's your favorite athlete? Who's your favorite athlete? Kobe. Okay, Kobe's an example there. Love Kobe. Now, did Kobe ever say, did Kobe ever say, or LeBron, or Tom Brady, or Serena Williams, that tennis, basketball, football, baseball, oh, it's a numbers game. Yeah, it's just a numbers game. Kobe said, it's just a numbers game. Just shoot it as many times as you can. You'll eventually hit one out of 20. Just a numbers game. Tom Brady, ah, oh, just throw as many passes as you can. You'll eventually connect with the target. Maybe one out of 10. Just a numbers game. Serena Williams, oh, it's just a numbers game. Just hit it as hard as you can. And, you know, sometimes you'll get it in between the lines. If Steph Curry, the three-point champ, said basketball was a numbers game, shoot it as many times as you can. You'll hit one here and there. They would have never made professional sports. They all said it's a what? It's a skills game. That's why they practiced every day on their technique and their shooting motions and their hips and how they move, you know, and their passing and their arm movements. And Serena would focus on, you know, her, her hips, right, and all that stuff. They focused and they practiced because they knew it was a skills game. And that's why they're the best. Top 1% is 
know that selling is also a skills game. And that's why they're focused on acquiring more advanced sales ability every single day. And that's why they make five to 10 times more than you right now. See, they're focused on the skills game. You're still over here with the crumbs focused on the numbers game. See the difference? Patrick Mahomes, skills game. That's why he practices every day. He's not focused on the numbers game. You see the difference? All right. Now, yeah, so I'll give you an example here. Like we, we typically have, so right now, we onboard almost a thousand high ticket clients from all these differences, uh, different industries every month. That does not include all the keynotes we trained, all the companies we train where the companies purchase our virtual training center. You're talking tens of thousands. I mean, you're talking, geez, half a million that we trained in the last four or five years. On average, we track the clients who have said, because they're the ones that post it, not us. We don't solicit any testimonies. We have over 18,000 testimonials now. The ones who said they more than tripled their earnings, on average, on average, the ones who said they more than tripled their earnings, clients in your industry that make triple five times what you are now, on average, they went through our 40, it's a 44-hour virtual training platform almost nine times almost nine times. Do the math. You think you're going to go through even our advanced training once and magically make three times? You think you're going to watch me on some long form YouTube videos or some reels and quadruple your earnings? How? You don't know enough. How are you going to master it from that? Our average client in your industry, 8.7 times going through that course to triple their sales, triple their income. Okay. They attended two live sessions every week, every week. They listen to recordings two to three times each while they drive around. Okay. They put in on average 60 to 90 minutes a day, day in and day out, acquiring those skills. And that's why they're making three to five times more than you are. Because they simply put in more time to learn the advanced skills that you just haven't decided you want to do yet. Once again, are you a thousand percent committed? Are you a thousand percent committed? You see the difference in that? So while you're driving, people are like, I don't have time, Jim. I don't have 60 to 90 minutes a day to learn more skills so I can sell more for my family. Well, you don't have time? Oh, well, what do you do when you're driving? What do you listen to when you're driving in the car? To church, to the grocery store, to work? To back to work. You don't have any time while you're driving? Oh, no, because you got to listen to your music. Yeah, your music. Your Fox News, CNN. You got to keep up on all the politics. It makes you zero dollars. You don't have time. Oh, well, while you're folding your clothes, what are you listening to? Oh, nothing. You're just watching TV. Oh, you don't have time, though. You don't have time to put in your 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 earbuds and, and on your phone. Learn more. Says, oh, when you're ironing your shirts, you don't have time. You know, the clothes you iron every night before you go to work? Oh, that five minutes a day? What are you doing with that five minutes a day? So you don't have to get up at three in the morning and be like, I need to spend three hours before work learning advanced skills. While you're folding your clothes, 10 minutes at night. Oh, there's 10 minutes that you're learning. Ironing your clothes. Oh, there's another eight minutes. That's 18 minutes a day. Oh, while you're driving to and from work, uh, let's say 20 minutes each way. That's 40 minutes a day. Oh, wow. 40 plus 10 plus 8. That's 58 minutes. But you didn't have time, right? You don't, you don't have time, right? What about when you're eating cereal in the morning for six minutes? What do you got in your, your ears listening to? Oh, right there. 40 plus 6 plus 10 plus 8. What is that? Oh, that's 64 minutes a day. Oh, 64 minutes a day times seven days a week. What is that? But you don't have any time to learn advanced skills, right? Um, you see the difference? Okay. You had time to go to college, spend 150000 on your education, all that debt to make sixty grand a year. But you don't have time to learn advanced skills. That might cost you three, five, six, seven grand. You don't have time to learn advanced skills to triple your income, do you? 
Oh, right. Oh, I just don't have the time. Maybe the question you should ask is, where do I need to find the time that I'm currently thinking something else is more of a priority and now shift that priority of time over to the priority of learning advanced skills so I can make a lot more income for my family who depends on me. Okay. Type in me if you want to get a thousand percent committed to acquiring the sales ability it takes to make even two to three times what you are now. Type in me in the chat. So if you're on Instagram, type in me. If you're in the Facebook group, Sales Revolution, type in me. If you're in the Facebook business page, type in me. If you're on YouTube, type in me right now. Let's see, type in me. Who's a thousand percent committed? You're in sales. You're already working 40 plus hours a week. You're already working those hours. Do you want to make a lot more during the hours you're already going to work? Type in me if that's you. All right, Jay, I'm going to move you guys back over here. Now, what's it going to take? to make what you want, to make two to three times or more what you are right now. What's it going to take? Two things. Commitment to want to. And the second thing is what? The sales ability, the skills to get you there. You could want that all day long, but if the moment the prospect answers the phone or you get on Zoom with them or you meet them in person, B2B or B2C, or even if you met them on the door, if you're door to door, if you don't understand the right questions to ask, if you don't understand how to use your tone to get them to let their guard down and emotionally want to open up to you, how will you ever make what you want? You want to acquire the skill sets message me directly right now. So if you're on Instagram, message me directly right now. If you're in the Facebook group revolution, sales revolution, almost 100,000 of you on there, message me directly right now. If you're in the Facebook business page, message me directly right now. You don't have to acquire those skills. You can stay where same income you're at now. Next year, next five years, next 10 years, nothing changes. If you're on YouTube, message me directly right now. Now, if you're on YouTube, you won't be able to message me there. You're going to have to join the Facebook group here. It's in the it's on the StreamYard here, that link, salesrevolution.pro. So just go to salesrevolution.pro and message me directly right there right now. Yes, we train... Tons of salespeople in the B2G industry, business to government. How to overcome nervousness when pitching? You want me to tell you? Stop using the word pitching. You just asked me that on Instagram. I weigh, I egg white Brazil nuts. Stop using the word pitching. Do you know why? You are literally hypnotizing yourself with that word. Do you know why you're nervous? Because the word pitch or pitching, how is that viewed in society? a much lower status. People don't like that. So because you know that that word pitching or pitch is viewed negatively by society in general, when you go into your pitch, you are hypnotizing yourself to get nervous. Oh, words have power. So instead, how can I get better at my presentations? How can I get better to my call to actions? See, when you change the words, it changes the meaning psychologically in your brain. If you're always saying the word pitch all the time, I can assure you, when you go into your pitch, you will get nervous and you will have anxiety because you don't like being pitched yourself. Your words have power. I'm friends with some really big, huge hypnotists. They'll all tell you, your words that you use day in and day out 
hypnotize your brain to think certain ways. Don't use the word pitch. I love you. Okay. All right. So message me directly, either myself or someone I team. There'll probably be two to 300 of you at least that message me. I'm not going to be able to message you all back. Okay. Uh, either myself, uh, we'll, we usually have about 19 to 25 people in the DMs. We'll message you back. They're going to ask you a couple of questions. Now, can you do yourself a favor? Can you tell us what's really going on? Or are you going to have a huge ego and stay guarded? Or we just don't know if we can help you. Has no impact on me. Has no impact on our clients in your industry. They already have those skills. That's why they make a lot more than you are right now. If you don't acquire them, who does it impact? It only impacts you. So when they ask you questions, just tell them the truth of what's really going on. Okay? That way we know we don't have one training program, one price. We have like 36 different versions for different industries, for different income levels. Once we understand your current sales ability, then we could uh, let you know which of our training programs will give you the quickest ROI for your current sales ability. Okay, everybody, love you. I got to get out of here. I got to go trick-or-treating. I got a meeting, and then I got to go trick-or-treating with my five-year-old. Happy Halloween. If you celebrate that here in the United States, I guess if you're outside of the United States, some celebrate, some don't. I'm going to dress up. I got a Batman mask, like a little Batman thing. I'm just going to wear a black sweatshirt, black pants. Not going all out. My little five-year-old Sophie is going to be Catwoman. So Catwoman and Batman walking around the, the different neighborhoods trick-or-treating. Thanks for all of you guys. Trick-or-treat. Happiness. Love you guys. Message me directly if you want to acquire the skills it will take for you to make three or four times what you are now, even if you're already doing well. See you soon.